When was the last time you took a leap of faith trusting that everything is going to work out? Do you crave growth or are you merely content with the status quo? If you want more out of your life, out of your career, and out of your relationships, you are in the right place. Take the leap and discover how to create a life by design rather than living it by default. Real success starts with you. Now here's your host, Colleen Biggs. All right. Hello, listeners, and welcome back to another episode of Take the Leap. I am your host, Colleen Biggs, and I'm excited to have another great guest with me uh, today, a powerhouse advocate. I love advocates. I really have always said I feel like I'm a champion to women. I'm not just a cheerleader in their corner, but I'm doing things to pave the way for them. I'm a champion for them, uh, going side by side with them. And really, I have felt in my life that the freeness that I have received from sharing my story, uh, sharing about myself. I remember standing in front of an audience once doing a lunch luncheon in 2019. And I stood up there and out of my mouth came that I cheated on my husband. You should have seen all the ladies sitting in the audience with these big eyes looking at me like, is she allowed to say that here? And I, I've had a speaking coach tell me that you don't want to heal on stage. You heal and then you get on stage and talk about the story. And I don't believe I was healing on stage. I was telling the story because I had already healed. And in that moment, I noticed a lot of women had not healed or maybe had skeletons in their closet that they had yet to reveal or speak about because they weren't comfortable. In that moment, I had already forgiven myself. I had already had my ex-husband forgive me. So I had gone through the healing. So to stand up there, it didn't feel like a lot of weight for me to say that that was part of my journey and part of my life. And I didn't have any guilt or shame because I had let that go. What would that feel like for some of you to let that go? Well, today, Michelle Dewsbury is with us. We're going to be talking about the fear of not speaking up. I already know some of you right now are like, oh, this is going to be an intense episode. It is going to be intense, but I will tell you, the more that you have decided to speak up and free yourself from shame or guilt or whatever that might be, um, or fear of what others might think, you're going to feel so much lighter because I and Michelle have been through these exercises and have been through this experience. So we're going to share all about that today. But before I do, I want to get to today's sponsor of today's show, Alley Spine Center in Scottsdale, Arizona. And what sets their office apart from the offices is their focus and expertise in treating degenerative spinal conditions, including disc disease, bulging herniated discs, spinal stenosis, neuropathy, sciatica, pain, tingling, and numbness in the arms, hands, legs, and feet, as well as severe chronic neck pain and headaches. Dude, I had the most chronic neck pain and I went to them and I am completely healed now amongst other things that I did. And I have to say that they do some really cool stuff there. They specialize in corrective care, not just maintenance. So they don't just treat they and with with like physical um, medicine modalities. So they do pre and post images. They help determine the structural improvements of the spine. You get exercises. There's so much that they do to help you out. So you can reach Ally Spine Center at 480-809-4700 and be sure to visit them online at AllySpineCenter.com. Now, if you don't live in Arizona, that doesn't matter. All you need to do is reach out to them. He is connected with um, corrective care facilities all over the United States. So if you're just going to a chiropractor, but you're not finding the relief you need, you might need corrective care. So they might need to do some images to see where you're at to know what the movement needs to be. Um, but I used to go three days a week for about four months. And I'll tell you, I feel amazing. So, all right, let's get to Michelle. She's a powerhouse advocate, like I said, for those who have experienced pain and trauma. And as the founder of Unsilenced Voices, a nonprofit organization dedicated to empowering survivors of domestic violence and abuse, Michelle's become a leading voice in the fight against these insidious crimes. Michelle's journey has been shaped by her own experiences of trauma and abuse. However, rather than letting these experiences hold her back, 
Michelle's used them as a catalyst for positive change, dedicating her life to helping others who've faced similar challenges. And you can see her featured in numerous publications and media outlets such as Yahoo Finance, KTLA, and NBC News. Michelle, welcome to today's Thank show. Thank you so much, Colleen. Super excited to be here and super excited to talk to your audience. I love where you started, though. When you got on stage that very first time and you said, I cheated on my husband, man, what an icebreaker that is. <laughs> Me being a speaker, I was listening to that going, wow, you definitely caught people's attention. And I think that that's what we need to do more of these days, too. Yeah. And why do you think I caught their attention? What was the main thing? Because no one airs their dirty laundry. Exactly. Nobody airs their dirty laundry. And the yeah. thing is, is we need more honest, transparent, and humble speakers on those stages so that the people in the audience who have experienced pain and trauma and, and hurtful acts, um, maybe those skeletons that you're talking about, that they feel confident enough to speak up about it so that we can change a lot of the injustices. So Colleen, I'm super excited to be here. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited to have you. You know, back in the day, they had this thing called the Scarlet Letter. I don't know if anyone re remembers that. Why do we insist on pinning that on to ourselves as like this barrier of pain and punishment for the rest of our life for things that not only maybe we have done in our own acts, but acts that people have done upon us? And that's where the trauma and the abuse right come in. And and I find that so many women, especially men included, carry that with them as if it's their baggage. I mean, they become a Sherpa just carrying that versus letting that go and be someone else's pain. Michelle, what have you found in your journey? I would love to go all the way back to the beginning of your experience and your trauma to really set the stage for our listeners to understand why you are such a champion and why you're an advocate for others to speak up. I mean, it's so incredibly important to speak up because if we don't and we carry that scarlet letter like you're talking about, it comes out in physical and emotional ailments when we get older. So that pain, that emotional suffering that we put ourselves through will come out in physical and, and emotional pain and confusion and depression and you name it. So yeah, let's go ahead and start from the beginning. Many of your audience members don't know who I am. So a bit about me, I was born in a small town in North Idaho, Sandpoint, and I was born to two amazing parents. My mom and my dad were beautiful souls, and I am what is called an adult orphan now. I lost my mommy back in 2019, and my dad uh, in 2015. But my daddy was military, so I moved around my whole life. And when I turned 18 years old, I decided that I wanted a change. And that change was to move to Hollywood, California and become a movie star. <laughs> so that's what I did. I moved my happy little butt to Hollywood and things were going really well. I was starring in plays and films and doing what I thought was going to take me on that success road to stardom at that time in my life. And I ended up meeting somebody during that time, blonde hair, blue eyed boy, swept me off my feet, began courting me and sending me gifts and flowers and taking me to sporting events. If you're a Dodgers fan, I'm still a huge Dodgers fan. I love baseball. Um, but he is all started with that. And I thought that this man was going to be my Prince Charming. About four months into that relationship, he had pushed me so hard against the wall that my head went through it. And at that point, I didn't understand what domestic violence was. I didn't know that this was the beginning stages of abuse. Mm -hmm. And I ended up staying with him for over four years. And during those four years, experiencing all forms, sexual, emotional, physical, and financial abuse from him. And when I finally escaped that relationship, that's when I, I knew that my story was too big not to share. And that's why we are talking about this, because your audience members, if you are listening out there, your story is too big not to share. Your story is too big to stay silent. Mm -hmm. 
And I started to speak up. At first, I ended up writing and performing a 65-minute solo play about my experience in domestic violence. And when I had performed that in 2016, people started coming up to me and telling me their experiences. And that's when I knew, statistically speaking, there are so many people around the globe who experience this type of injustice. And I look up and I said, okay, God, I hear you. What do you want me to do next? And in 2017, I founded Unsilenced Voices, which is a nonprofit that has worked in four countries around the globe, uh, Ghana, Sierra Leone, where the bulk of our programming still happens. Happens, Rwanda, and then in 2023 in the United States, we gifted over $33,000 to U.S. survivors. We did a tour um, called The Blanket of Hope to provide awareness and collaboration. And then 2019, I wrote my first book called But I Love Him. I have now, to this date, um, been involved in six books. Uh, very excited to be publishing in 2024 a couple of novels. And uh, began speaking and coaching. So that's that's the short end version of my story. And Colleen, I'm sure you have questions for me. Uh, but as we are on here, it does remind me that when I started, there was a lot of fear. Mm -hmm. And when I started using my voice and sharing my story, I felt like my abuser was going to be at the end of the elevator when the doors opened, holding a Glock waiting to kill me but I chose to continue speaking up and I chose to continue moving forward despite the fear I had. Yeah. I don't talk a lot about um, all the pieces of my life on, you know, on radio or uh, necessarily even in my groups. It really just depends on the moment and, you know, where we are and what's happening. And I too was, um, a victim of abuse, not only from a child, but then I followed that same pattern into a boyfriend that I dated uh, during high school. Um, and it was not uncommon. And it, what triggered that for me was when you said when you would if you would thought that possibly you could open up an elevator and walk out and there'd be him standing there with a gun. And there were numerous times where he would hold me hostage in an apartment with a gun. He would have a gun to his head saying he's going to commit suicide. And you said that book, but I love him. That was my response to everything like, but I love him. I don't want to be mean, but to wake up to a gun to your head because he's having a bad morning and you're like, seriously, I'm going to be late for work if you don't like stop doing this. So it just becomes the normal. And someone else is thinking a gun to your head in the morning is a normal act. It just kind of becomes this normal life. That is not normal. But no. to you, it's normal. And you're saying, but, but he's he's hurting. He's going to kill himself if I don't stay with him. And that's not your problem. Actually, I just want to share with you. It's not. And there are so many women. It's why I'm such a big supporter of nonprofits is yours, you know, that are breaking generational poverty that are helping women. Do you know, statistically, Michelle, I'm sure you know this. Most women would never mark on a piece of paper check that they're being abused. But all of the testing that they do and questions that they'll ask tell the person reviewing their paperwork that they're in an abusive relationship, like 89% of them are the check no. Well, when you're involved in that type of cycle, you don't want mm. to say yes, because yeah. when you're involved, you yeah. are in the trenches. You are there to love him or her because you feel like yeah. you are their only support system. Even when I was in my abusive relationship, yeah. I, I didn't know I was being abused. I People would tell me, I'm like, what are you talking about? This isn't abuse. I He needs me. I need to help him. Yeah. But then afterwards, when you look back and statistically speaking, one in three women worldwide have experienced domestic violence. And that's not talking about the childhood trauma that now is popping up and a lot of people are becoming even more aware of and how that childhood trauma then leads them into yeah. abusive situations and relationships. So it is, um, it is definitely a generational cycle that needs to be stopped. And the only way to stop the generational cycle is to speak up. And that's yeah. how I believe personally that we can stop not only systemic racism and poverty and domestic violence, but human trafficking and um, all of the things happening in our society today. What would you say? Um, 
where this this fear of not speaking up is coming from. I mean, I know where it came from for me in the very beginning. You know, I had a restraining order. I literally had a restraining order because of the how many times he showed up at my work or my fear. I used to have people walk me to my car, you know, so I had that exact fear that you did. The elevator fear was my parking lot fear. And I just thought one day I'd walk out, he'd shoot me dead um, because growing up, I had a friend who her boyfriend did just shoot her in a park. And then he shot himself because he said, if he can't have her, no one can have her. Yeah. So this is this some of these really horrible relationships end in death. What we're talking about today is so serious when we're talking about sex trafficking, when we're talking about physical abuse, mental abuse. This is just breaking down people, breaking people yeah. down. Oh, it definitely is breaking down people. And I think that the number one fear for most individuals is how other people will view them. Oh. Of course, there is that fear that he or she, because horrible things can happen to men as well. Don't get me wrong. And domestic violence to men in the U.S. is one in seven is uh, what the statistics say. But we, we're fearful of speaking up because we don't want that scarlet letter on our back. We don't want society to view us as a victim because we can't stay victim mentality in order to live a successful and productive life. However, if we don't speak up, then we live a victim life because of pain and turmoil and anxiety and depression. So a lot of people are fearful of what others say. So we have a book collaboration every year called Breaking the Silence, Voices of Survivors. And we're publishing volume one in January of 2024. And one of our authors in particular, her ex tried to silence her. And her ex actually has contacted me stating that he will come after us if his name is in the book and things like that. Well, I sued my abuser for domestic violence. I know legally speaking, as long as you don't say names, dates, and locations or identifying characteristics, you are free to tell the truth. And we need to speak up and tell the truth. So this author is speaking up and telling her story so that other people who may be fearful of similar reasons can continue to tell their stories so that we can create a domino effect of change. So no matter what that fear is of what other people may think or of what he or she could possibly do to you, staying quiet will perpetuate the evils that continue to happen around the globe. And you brought up sex trafficking. Sex trafficking alone is a $99 billion industry. That's not human. Human trafficking is $300 billion. So when you're talking about all of these horrible things that happen to children, to men and women, we have to, we have to use our voices to change. You know, our, our tongue can be so powerful to bring down or bring up somebody. And when you use it in a positive manner, telling truth, then you're encouraging other people to use their tongues in a positive way as well. So as you can tell, Colleen, I'm very passionate about this. Um, I 100% believe that it requires strength and commitment and um, you know a strong support system and community to help people speak up. But we have to do it because there are so many things that need to be changed on this planet. I heard two things in that that really resonated with me. And the first one was power. Mm -hmm. When we are not speaking up, when we are allowing ourselves to be silenced and to be a victim, we are powerless. We have zero power. You become powerful when you start making change. And the only way to do that is to start making a movement forward and talking about it, whether it be in behind closed doors to a therapist to start, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. To go through therapy. doesn't have to be in a book. It doesn't have to be in a movie. It doesn't have to be on a podcast or a radio show. It could literally be in, in closed doors uh, with a therapist to start talking about it to work through the trauma. 
Yeah, Next, expressing yourself. <clears throat> yes, absolutely. Yeah. Till you get to the point where you're comfortable enough sharing it out loud as I was, right? Yep. That took a lot of therapy to get to that point. That was not uh, yesterday I cheated, today I got on stage and said it. No, there was years, 15, 20 years in between there. So the next thing I heard you say was judgment. And that's the number one reason why people don't want to speak up. Judgment. They'll speak silently to someone who has a confidentiality agreement and they won't tell anyone. But the minute they speak up, you're worried that someone is going to judge you and it's going to taint your character, your integrity, everything about you. So when people know that I did that act, they they have an opinion of how they feel about it based on their opinion, their life, their mirror. It has yep. nothing to do with me, my life. They weren't in my life. They weren't in that time in motion of what was going on in my life. What I did does not make it the right act ever. But you do not have the permission to condemn somebody for the rest of their life for something they did wrong and ask for forgiveness, received repentance because they prayed for it or whatever it is that they needed to do, received forgiveness from the person that they wronged, they get to be let free of that and move on. Just like if someone was an abuser in their past and learned a different way, they're not always an abuser. They get to be forgiven and move on to have a different life. If we don't believe in reform, then nobody would ever get out of prison. They would be there forever. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, Jesus said in the Bible, those who have no sin, throw the first stone. And that is nobody because we <laughs> all are sinners and we all have done things that we, you know, wish we hadn't, or we've been through experiences that were so hurtful or harmful that we don't want to discuss them because we never want to bring that up, but we've all experienced it. So the judgment from others, I always tell people they can go F themselves, right? In, in that way. Like, I don't care what they no. think because they have skeletons in their closet as well. It is up to us to continue speaking up. And it's it's just so important to do so like you're talking about because there was those people who judged you when you said that you cheated. There were those people who condemned you. But the thing is, is they had similar situations in their lives that they were hiding. And the one thing is you can't hide it from the God and you can't mm -hmm. hide it from yourself. So it's time to speak up because once we, you know, face these injustices, once we face the things that we've done, then we can change like you talked about. And, you know, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result is called insanity. The only way to make change is to change us. You can't change anybody else around you but you can change you. That means abusers. Yeah. That means um, people who have done horrible, hideous things in their lives. When they repent, when they forgive themselves, when they work through what it is that they've gone through, when they get the healing that they need, then they get to live a part of society without being judged. Right. Let's go back. We just talked about what it does for freeing us, right? Yeah. So what it does for freeing us from that guilt, from that shame, um, from that uh, wrong, that as an individual. Now, when you speak up because you're a victim, because we've been a victim, I've, I've, I've done wrongdoings and I've been a victim um, of uh, trauma. When you speak up, going back to the very beginning of the podcast, you said that we free others that we uh, our stories allow others to feel that it's okay for them to come forward and follow in your footsteps. I, it makes me think of the four minute mile. Every doctor said it couldn't be done. Your heart would explode. This it's impossible. And then when one person broke the record, so many individuals behind them did the exact same thing because now they knew it was possible. Yep. I believe it, it, it does take someone to move a mountain before someone behind them believes it's possible. 
So if you're not willing to speak up and you're not willing to share your story, someone else feels that it's okay to stay silent because they you're not speaking up. So why should they speak up? Um, Have you ever been on the road, Michelle, and there's something in the road or water or whatever? And all of a sudden, the first car does something. Then every car just follows behind them like ants and everyone does the exact same thing. In fact, I've followed cars in front of me that were doing something that going in the wrong lane or and I'm like, what? Why am I following them? And then I would go back over and do, you know, whatever I the person in the front went the wrong way. Every single person behind them followed them the wrong way. You know, I was listening to John Maxwell live one day. This was this was years ago when I was listening to him in person. And he had talked about a case where there was a car in front of him. It was a bad snowstorm. And this car in front of him exited and all the cars behind him exited the freeway because nobody could see because all they could see was the car in front of them. Now I'm going to bring this back to your podcast. Your podcast is called Leap and Lead, right? It's about leadership. So in order to bring leaders with you, you have to lead. And that may require you to speak first so that other people then can speak up. Mm -hmm. And we lead so that we can bring people with us, not that we can leave them as followers, but to create other leaders so that we can create domino effects of change. Mm -hmm. So I love what you said, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. So the really the only way and I felt this for myself, the only way that I was able to get my power back because I felt powerless being a victim. The only way I was to do that was to unpack the pain, to talk about it, to move forward to forgive, to be forgiven, and to know that um, I have the right, just like anybody else, uh, to move forward no matter if I was um, wronged or if I wronged somebody else. We're not perfect. Not any of us live in glass houses, no matter what anybody says. And so it's not our responsibility to judge others. What if? Just this crazy idea, Michelle. What if we all didn't judge other people. And what if we just loved other people for who they were and had empathy and understanding for something they may be going through and support them versus judging them? Despite whatever religion you are, or uh, whether you are an atheist or a Buddhist or a Christian or a Jew, the one common denominator to create abundance and happiness in society is love. Mm -hmm. And if we were to love one another the way we love ourselves, love our neighbor as thyself, then we wouldn't have child trafficking and sex abuse. And we wouldn't have, you know, domestic violence or um, abuse towards animals or abuse towards the planet, we would be living out of a space of love. And that mm-hmm. is empathy. One of my very good friends, his name is George Chanos. He is the former attorney general of the state of Nevada. He wrote a book called Millennial Samurai. In Millennial Samurai, he talks about empathy being the number one skill set any entrepreneur entrepreneur needs for the 21st century, any person needs for the 21st century. That empathy is what can change the trajectory of society. Being empathetic towards one another is caring and loving. Mm-hmm. So we would change the world, Colleen, if we all loved one another. I think that's a beautiful note to leave the podcast on. It really is. I mean, we covered so much in such a short amount of time. And Michelle and I's only hope in this entire podcast is someone that's listening knows that it's time for them to speak up, knows that it's time for them to share their story, whether it be behind closed doors with a therapist to work through healing or whether you've done your healing and now it's time to put it in a book. Now it's time to say it on a podcast. Now it's time to just type it out in a blog. Um, However it feels right to you, I think the perfect nonprofit for you to reach out to is Michelle's. So Michelle, tell us more about your nonprofit and how every single person that's connected um, on this podcast can connect with you today. 
Yeah, thank you so much, Colleen. Unsilenced Voices, we've been working now for five plus years combating domestic violence, um, racism, and poverty. And Sierra Leone, like I said in the beginning, is where the bulk of our programming happens. Earlier on in 2023, we filmed a TV show with the Fixers on BYU, and we built a building to help with financial stability in one of the villages that we support. We also work in brothels. We have young girls that we put through vocational training. We are working to fundraise for our own school with a housing component on it. So if you are interested in, say, sponsoring a survivor, you can go to sponsorasurvivor.org. Again, sponsorasurvivor.org. For $3.33 a day, you can pay for vocational training, materials, a monthly stipend, medical, and counseling services for one survivor. So we have well over 50, 60, 70 girls on that wait list. If you are interested in learning more about what we're doing in the United States and other countries, you can always go to unsilencedvoices.org. Again, unsilencedvoices.org. And then to connect with me, of course, is michellejuicebury.com. Thank you, Michelle. It's been a wonderful conversation today. I want to thank you for sharing your message, for sharing your heartfelt stories. Um, this was It's not easy for Michelle and I to come out and continue. And I, I don't think there's one time in my life that it will ever be super easy to voice what I've been through, what's happened to me, what I've done to others. It's never easy, but it's necessary. Yeah, it's never easy, but it's necessary. So if anyone thinks one day it's just going to be so easy, it's not. Nothing it's worth not. a damn is easy. No, I love and that's, that. That's something Beautiful. to always remember because life yeah. isn't easy, but it's necessary. You know, for my listeners that are listening today, you're the only you that's ever been. You're the only you that's ever going to be. You matter. You can make an impact. So today's a good day to choose. Are you ready to step forward and do you need that support? Because if you do, I've got the pers perfect person for you to connect with here, Michelle, to be able to get the support you need to move in that direction. Um, and if you're not ready, maybe you go back and you listen to this episode 145 again a month from now and feel like if you're ready then. And maybe you listen to it in now a month from then and see if you're ready for it then. Whatever it takes for you to get ready, this is your only chance in life. And you can change the lives of others. Look at every other movement that's ever happened from people that have been in prison because of wrongdoings to women. We've seen it happen. One person comes forward and says, this is not right. And for 20 years, it had been happening behind the scenes. And then 200 more people come forward finally and say, yes, I also was part of that. I also was abused. And they lived with that pain for years and it was not their pain and it was not their fault. It was not their pain and it was not their fault. You do not need to carry this burden. So today's a great day to let go of that burden and live free yeah. and unsilence like your voice. And unsilence your voice, 100%. I always like to, to leave interviews with um, a famous quote. Uh, Colleen, have you seen the movie Finding Nemo? I have. Okay, so Dory in that movie, the one thing that she sings to herself is just keep swimming. So I encourage all of your listeners, everything that Colleen has talked about, speaking up, getting the help you need, but just keep swimming. Sounds good, Michelle. And to all of you out there today, please don't ever forget from now until our next episode, be you and be strong. Bye-bye for now. Thank you for joining us on this journey of self-discovery, where you learned the tools to create a life by design. Remember, you are the only you there is, and you are the only you that will ever be. Be you and be strong, because you are brilliant and the world needs you at your best. We cannot wait for you to join us again next time.